One of the most like convoluted, challenging recipes I've come across in a long time, if not like right at the top of that list. Like I started this at noon. It is now 10.16 in the evening. This book has seen better days. This was brand new when I started the show. And this is a metaphor for what this show is doing to up here. It's a pretty damn good metaphor. Welcome back to the show. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. Okay, so yeah, I heard from a lot of people uh, what happened to this show, you know? It was going on every week for like half a year, and then nothing. Uh, I just need a little break, honestly, from the, the butter and the cream and uh, reading this book. There's a lot of recipes left in this book. And then there's other books too. So this show is not coming to an end anytime soon, but you have convinced me to keep going, even though I was never gonna stop. Mastering the Art of French Cooking from Julia Child. This book is my guiding star. It is my torture device to make me improve my cooking skills because I'm just teaching myself how to do this stuff. Let's get to what's important here. And today's recipe has me scratching my head already. Moussaka is on the menu today, which I don't know a lot about moussaka. I know it kind of looks like lasagna and I thought it was a Middle Eastern dish or like a Greek dish or like Turkish or Ottoman Empire, Eastern European. Like, I don't know what it's doing in a French cooking cookbook, is what I'm trying to say. And honestly, JC Ooh, has hard. left me with no clarity as to why it's in here. It's probably just like your non-traditional moussaka. A mold is lined with the skins of cooked aubergine and filled with a carefully seasoned mixture of cooked lamb, aubergine, and mushrooms. It presents itself after baking and unmolding as a shiny dark purple cylinder surrounded with a deep red tomato sauce. It is delicious either hot or cold. I made sure I had everything that I need to get started, but besides that, I'm just gonna go through sentence by sentence, word by word, until the damn thing's finished. Five one pound aubergines, I have three, but I don't know how much they weigh, and I mean, whatever I do is gonna be too much, so I'm just gonna stick with my three. Give them a wash, remove the green caps, and slice the aubergine in half lengthwise. Okay, cut deep gashes in the flesh of each half. Is this enough gashes? How about five gashes? Six, six gashes, deep gashes. Do that to the rest of these. Something like that. Do not pierce the skin. Okay, I didn't do that. Adding the salt is gonna like, kind of dry these bad boys up. It's gonna remove some of like the excess water. And uh, what? It's gonna take away some of the bitterness too. So uh, I let this hang out here for like half an hour. Good start. We have half an hour to wait for the salt in the eggplant, so I'm gonna move on to tomato sauce, page 79. Okay, I actually need to do quite a bit of work here. Classic Julia Child. Oh. Some celery, carrot, and onion. Classic mirepoix. One ounce of each of these three. I didn't know that the tomato sauce was gonna be as labor intensive as it is. I'm just gonna, as quickly as I can, just chop this stuff up. Two slices of ham that I'm gonna chop up as quickly and as haphazardly as I can. Let me take you to the stove. Drop the ham into some boiling hot water. I'm gonna simmer it for 10 minutes. Medium heat, frying pan, tablespoon, knob of butter, two tablespoons of oil. Get the butter packaging out of. Once the butter melts, add the vegetables and the boiled ham. Ladybugs, stir this frequently and I'm gonna cook it for 10 minutes, but it can't brown. That's the catch. I'm only at the tomato sauce and I'm already confused by some of the, the phrasing in this book. It says, Blend the flour in the ham in the vegetables. Blend the flour. Like with a blender or am I just adding it in? Blend the flour. Okay, so in this, I guess I'm adding three tablespoons of flour. I'm gonna add it in here 
and try to blend. So I guess I cook this for an additional three minutes like this. Take off the heat. Three quarter of a cup of beef stock. Okay, so while it's off the heat, I think I'm just gonna figure out everything that I need to do for this tomato sauce because I didn't think it was gonna be as complicated as it is. Roughly two pounds of chopped red ripe tomatoes, not peeled. Take the stem out first and foremost. You know what, it might not even matter today. Just, just chop them. Back on the heat, add the tomatoes. Quarter teaspoon of salt, one eighth teaspoon of sugar, two unpeeled cloves of garlic, make it three. I'm not driving. One bay leaf, four sprigs of parsley, and like a quarter teaspoon of dried thyme. This is just my thinking, but I'm gonna add some tomato paste too. Like two tablespoons. Simmer for one and a half to two hours. Jeez. You know, which is fine. I just didn't put that into the uh, allotted time that uh, I, I gave myself today to, to make this recipe. Okay, so after 30 minutes, or way more than 30 minutes in my case, l'aubergine. Go eggplant. Wash under cold water. You gotta get that salt off, right? Totally should have just showed you like what these look like because the salt made all the water in the eggplant like rise up to the top. So it was all on top. It was kind of neat looking, but it's uh, done now. Okay. Squeeze out juice. How much can I squeeze? I don't want to ruin these poor things. I'm just gonna do a slight squeeze. Well, medium, medium squeeze. Oh, I tore that one. Dry them, I don't know how much. I don't know like what is going, okay, I didn't really. The recipe, it's being super vague. It's being very vague. Is that dry? Okay, it's dry. I'm gonna cover this entire thing with olive oil. Just rub with olive oil. Do I leave the seeds in? It doesn't say anything about the seeds. I leave the seeds in. Place aubergine skin side down. Half an inch of water, it says. Into this? Why add all the water if you just removed all the water? Bake in the upper part of a preheated oven for about half an hour until just tender. These are tender, these are done. What do I have to do with the tomato sauce? Okay, strain the sauce, it's a, not like that. It's a dork, dork way of doing it. So kind of just like forcing as much of this liquid through the sieve as I can get. I passed all that stuff through multiple times and that's as much of the sauce as I could get. I thought I'd get more, but also I'm just happy that I got some. Grapefruit spoon goes in, let's give it a taste. Won't lie, could use a little salt. Maybe just a little pepper too, just cause. Just kind of simmer it, kind of. Okay, until you need it. Great. Clean up your mess. Okay, I don't know what three ounces of onions is, cause I don't have a scale, but I'm gonna assume one onion. Finely chopped. A frying pan on low heat, dessert spoon of olive oil, and then add your onions. Cook these on low for 15 minutes. Mushrooms, half a pound. Dunk them in some water, you get the mud, the dirt, the shit. Get it all off, that's terrific. People say, don't wash your mushrooms. I like to wash them. Chop these finely. You gotta power through as much as you can right now. You're behind. This is the quickest I've ever cut up much. One huge ass chop. Twist the mushrooms in a ball in the corner of a cloth to extract their juice. I need a clean cloth. Okay, mushrooms. Mushroom juice. Juice through the sieve into the tomato sauce. Mix that in and then probably bring this back to a simmer over at the stove. And then saute the mushrooms and shallots. Oh, chopped shallots or spring onions. Two tablespoons of spring onions chopped. Honestly, it'd just be much easier if I just had a freaking bowl. Oh 
Okay, and what I need to do is take the onions that you kind of forgot about that have been on the stove for 15 minutes, get those in the mixing bowl. Medium low heat, uh, yeah. Olive oil, mushrooms, green onions, five minutes. Let's add the mushrooms and the spring onions to the mixing bowl. When the aubergine are tender, carefully scoop the flesh with the spoon, leaving the skin intact. Honestly, it's just easier with your hands. Chop up half the flesh and then add to the mixing bowl. Dice or slice the other half. Heat up the frying pan with some olive oil. Add the other half of eggplant. Five minutes or so, whatever, until it's browned lightly. Honestly, one of life's biggest regrets will be not removing these eggplant seeds. I don't know what the hell I was thinking. Even though the book doesn't say anything about it. The sun is, uh... So I'm having a whale of a time with this recipe. Uh, this recipe is um, a combination of time consuming and challenging. Sometimes when I'm making a video like this, I like to hit the pause button and then I'll just like tackle it fresh tomorrow. But um, you know, the sun's setting, I just wanna hang out, power through and get it done now, then I don't have to do it tomorrow, which is also very enticing. If I commit myself to you right now and say that yes, I'm going to get this done tonight, well then I have to hold myself accountable. If everything in this kitchen starts to look a bit funky, it's because we're going in overtime. Are you serious? Okay. Oil the mold. What? Oil the mold. I need a three pint cylindrical mold. Preferably a Charlotte. What? Oh, it's just like any, you can use anything. Okay, plenty of options here. Firstly, I have this. The only problem with this is that the edges go up too high. This little thing, but this is too small. And I have this, but I'm making the moussaka for just me, so this is way too big. Okay, I've completely changed my mind. Why not if I make it in this and not this? Duh, use this, you love this thing. Okay, so oil it. Line it with aubergine skins. They're purple sides against the mold. Place each lengthwise a pointed end at the center of the bottom of the mold. What the f... Lengthwise? A pointed end at the center of the bottom of the mold. What the? Lengthwise. Lengthwise against what? It's the most needlessly complicated thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Think something like this. The problem is I don't have enough eggplant. It looks so stupid. See, the problem I'm having is lengthwise against what? Like lengthwise going this way or lengthwise going this way? I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. Reset the oven to 375. I can do that. Add all the ingredients alongside to the mixing bowl. I haven't even done any of this yet. Oh. This recipe is super unhelpful. It just says you need minced cooked lamb. Well, I have the lamb, but I thought that you'd give me a little more warning of when to use it. But it says I need minced cooked lamb. So it's like, okay, how do you cook it? Is there any sort of tips, any kind of tips of the trade? I'm cooking the lamb without uh, your help then. Fine. Medium heat, frying pan, olive oil in. I cook with lamb literally never, so the instructions on how to cook lamb, I'm just gonna kind of use my knowledge of how to cook beef and then carry it over to the lamb. Um, but I mean, it's not asking a lot that the cookbooks supply a little instruction on how to do so. I'm gonna season pepper too. Okay, so the mixing bowl, add all the ingredients alongside this. Gotcha. Minced lamb, about a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of thyme, half a teaspoon of pepper. Oh my God, I have rosemary. 
That was a long shot, but I have it. Rosemary. Half a teaspoon. Okay, one clove of crushed garlic. A quarter pint of thick brown sauce. Page 69 to 73. So I gotta make something else again. Okay. 69 to 73, you say? Oh my God. These are so much work. Flour-based brown sauce, which will take two hours. Two hours for 100 milliliters of sauce. I can't justify that. Okay, I gotta put my thinking cap on. Uh, thick brown sauce is like a gravy. N'est-ce pas? Okay, so it's not just as simple as a gravy. It's like a French brown sauce. But I think if you don't have one ready, you can get away with this easier method, which is beef bouillon cubes, and then a couple things I have to do. This is still gonna take 20 minutes. Beef bouillon stock powder stuff. Beef stock on a low simmer. Chopped up carrot, chopped up onion. Whatever wine you have left over in an open bottle, that's all I'm dealing with. 120 milliliters, sure, why not? Parsley sprigs. Half a bay leaf, little bit of thyme, and like a tablespoon of tomato paste. Okay. After half an hour, the brown sauce has simmered. Um, oh, there's the camera. Uh, becoming uh, later in the evening now. The sun is setting and my brown sauce is complete. This is gonna be there, so let's just, let's just forget about it. I need to pass this through a sieve. I don't know, that didn't even make anything. Add the brown sauce into my mixing bowl. Two tablespoons of tomato paste. Three eggs. Mix it all together with a wooden spoon. Pepper. Salts. Okay, I get the moussaka mold. An inch of the mixture into the bottom of the mold. Aubergine. Uh, where are those? Oh. A layer of the sautéed aubergine. Okay, just kind of flatten it on top. Continue thus ending with a layer of the lamb mixture. Fold the dangling ends of the aubergine skin up over the surface. Like the whole surface, because that's not gonna cut it. There's gonna be a little space there. Really stupid question though, but where does the tomato sauce come in? Because I spent half the day making the tomato sauce. Surround the serving dish with a quarter pint of the tomato sauce. Like that's all you want me to do with it? Anytime I look up what a moussaka looks like, it looks like a freaking like cheese on top or like there's a bechamel sauce or something, but this is just this? I'm not buying that, folks. I don't know. Tin foil and a lid. So bake it in the bottom part of the oven for, bottom part of the oven, it's close enough. Bake it for an hour and a half. Wait 10 minutes. How the hell do I serve this thing? Cut it like a square or something. Tomato sauce, like around it, like a moat. I don't know, I'm all out of ideas. Well, I was hungry. It took all day to make that, so I mean, it has that going for it. It's like a very 1950s feel to, what is it called? Meatloaf. That's what that reminds me of. I was really expecting like 
something beautiful. Well, something beautiful. I feel like it is lacking any sort of cohesive, like enjoyable flavor for me. It's pretty just nothing. It's just kind of dry. I have no doubt in my mind like that a traditional moussaka, one from like, from the Middle East, or Greece, or wherever, would be just, I could easily just say that it was good, but I'm not going to. You know what? I didn't like it at all. Okay, the suffering is over. That's everything we have today. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. See you soon. Good tomato sauce.